In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to amortize a bond issued at a premium using a straight line method of amortization. And I have it laid out here in T account form where I've got the asset and liability account shown over here and they're part of the balance sheet. And then over on this side, I've got the interest expense that we recognize each period on that bond and that's part of net income on the income statement. So let's look at our example here. We have 100,000 face value of a bond with a 9% stated rate of interest and it's for five years and that would be 10 semi-annual payments. So over here we receive cash of $104,100 for that bond and that's based on discounting this bond uh, maturity value of $100,000 plus its uh, in a semi-annual interest payments and we discount that at the market rate of interest and we get the hundred and four one hundred thousand dollars here that market rate of interest for is for eight percent per year so we have to come up with a balancing entry here between the hundred and four thousand one hundred dollar debit balance here in cash and the credit balance on the bonds payable of a hundred thousand dollars so what we use is a premium to bonds payable that's a valuation account to the bonds payable that increases the bonds payable account and it also reduces the interest expense that we recognize each period on that bond so the balance here would be the forty one hundred dollars in that premium account that balances the hundred and four thousand dollar debit to cash and a hundred thousand uh, dollar credit here to the bonds payable so if we go down here, we have an interest payable account. Now that's based on the uh, interest payments that we pay to our bondholders each period. And that would be based on uh, a 9% um, uh, stated rate of interest or 4.5% per period. So you take the 4.5% times the $100,000 uh, face value and you get a $4,500 here payment each period to the bondholders for the interest due on that bond. Then if we go up here, we have our interest expense, and that's what we recognize on our income statement here each period. And that's based on our interest payment that we make to the bondholders minus that amortization of that premium amount. All right, let's calculate our premium to bonds payable amortization here. Now remember this premium to bonds payable is a reduction to our interest expense that we recognize each period and it's also a balancing entry between the cash account here and the bonds payable and also a balancing entry between the interest payable and our interest expense. So let's go down and make our calculations here. We have that $4,500 payment that we make to the bondholders each period and that's at 9% uh, or 4.5% per period times the $100,000 face value of the bond. And then we have to go over here and calculate the interest expense that we recognize each period. And that's based on an 8% uh, interest rate or the market rate of 8%. Now, how do we do that? Well, first here, we have to uh, calculate our premium to bonds payable uh, that we amortized amount here. So we take the total amount of the premium here of $4,100 and divide it by 10 periods. And we come up with a $410 amount of amortized premium each period here and that's a constant around each period here of four hundred ten dollars so we take this four hundred and ten dollars amortized premium and we subtract that from the interest payment that we make to the bondholders and we come up with the interest expense that we recognize each period and that in this case is four thousand ninety dollars and that is also a constant amount that we recognize each period now taking this uh, premium amortization amount here we subtract that from the carrying value of the bond here. So we started out with $104,100. We subtract that premium amount. We come up with our new carrying value here of $103,690. Now this premium is reduced or this uh, carrying value of the bond is reduced each period by this premium amortization amount until we get down to the last payment here when the bond becomes due and it has a carrying value of $100,000 which matches its uh, face value of $100,000. So let's go look here at our interest expense that we uh, had to pay each period to the bond, or for the bondholders and that totaled uh, $45,000, 10 payments times $4,500 each. Now the interest expense that we recognized on that bond here is $40,900 here. So we subtract the two here, the 
uh, 40900 from the $45,000 interest payments that we made, and we come up with this premium to bonds payable here of $4,100. Okay, let's review what we've done here. We've amortized this premium on bonds payable down to a zero balance. And by doing that, we reduce the carrying value of this bond by that premium amortization each period. So we start out here with $104,100, and by the time we get down to the end of the last payment here, or at the when this bond becomes due, we have a $100,000 carrying value, and that matches its face value of $100,000. So let's look at this premium to bonds payable as a balancing entry between the interest payable and the interest expense. So we look at our first period here where we have a debit amount of $400 here in a premium to bonds payable and we would add that to the debit balance here of $4,090 to the interest expense and that would balance here at our interest payable of $4,500. Now if we look at this premium to bonds payable, the total amount here would be amortized down to $4,100. Now you would add that to the interest expense that we recognize here of $40,900 and that balances with the interest payable here of $45,000. So let's look here at our entries here when the, uh, on this interest payable. Now each period uh, that interest payable would be reduced by that payment amount that we make to our bondholders. Then going up here, looking at our cash account, we see that uh, we reduce cash each period by $4,500, those uh, payments to the bondholders. And then when the bond become mature or due, we'd also re reduce cash by that $100,000. And then for our bonds payable account, when the bond became due here, in the last period, we reduced the bonds payable by $100,000. So in review here, this premium to bonds payable is a balancing uh, account here between the bonds payable and the cash account and also the interest payable and the interest expense. Now this premium to bonds payable is actually a reduction in our interest expense that we recognize each period. So this is just a summary of how you would uh, record a bonds payable issued at a premium and how you would use this premium to bonds payable uh, to amortize that uh, premium on that bond down to its carrying value of $100,000 when it's due at maturity.